It's an animal tranquilizer that has found its way into heroin and fentanyl supplies in Philadelphia. And it's now spreading across the country. NBC's George Solis traveled to ground zero for the dangerous new substance, Philly's Kensington neighborhood, where he spoke with business owners and volunteers on the front lines of this crisis. And we want to warn you, the topics covered here and the imagery as well, it is graphic. This is an anti-drug ad running in Mexico. It's not warning about places like Tijuana or Juarez, but instead the city of Philadelphia, specifically the Kensington neighborhood, home to one of the nation's largest open-air drug markets, where drug overdose deaths are skyrocketing, in large part because of a new substance in the drug supply, the powerful animal sedative xylazine, a.k.a. Trank. Store owner Elvis Amancio knows the devastation all too well. He's been cleaning up garbage, human waste, and discarded needles from his storefront every day for more than a decade. How exhausting is it to have to clean up every so single day? It's a little bit frustrating, you know, but you got to keep doing it. But he has nowhere to go. Could there be a point where it becomes too much for you and your family to do this day in and day out? I would say if any or my family or my employees get harmed, I think I, I'll, I'll think about it. Trank first appeared in Philly more than a decade ago, mixed in with heroin and fentanyl. But by 2021, it was found in 90% of all street opioid samples. And it's quickly spread throughout the country, increasing in some regions almost 200%. Trank overdoses can't be reversed by Narcan, and many users develop flesh-eating infections that can lead to amputation if left untreated. In Kensington, limb-saving care takes place at street level on tables like this. Have you saved lives on this table? Yes, we absolutely have. Our team constantly saves lives. Sarah Laurel runs Savage Sisters Recovery, providing care and housing for addicts and cleanups for the neighborhood. She draws on her own near-death experience with addiction to help those in need. Seeing my friends on the street with their limbs exposed does not make me want to get high. It does not make me want to use. It makes me want to bring change. And I don't think that anybody could walk out there and see what we deal with on a daily basis and say, I want what they have. Laurel says the city is ignoring its responsibility to both residents and the unhoused. They're not coming through for the business owners that have been here. And this us against them mentality is exactly what the city wants. The end fighting keeps the focus off of them. Business owners and nonprofits in Kensington are fighting to promote positive change in the neighborhood with demands for basic needs like housing and funding for health resources. When we reached out, the city pointed to a number of programs and services it's launched to help address the community's needs including crime prevention tips, storefront improvements, and a security camera program. But many here say it's not making enough of a difference. The city treat this neighborhood is like the trash can. Moving these people from one block to the other, it's not a solution. We cannot continue ignoring this because these are human beings. Husband and wife, Dionisio and Mariangeli, must ask addicts to move away from their award-winning restaurant, Cantina La Martina, nearly every day. These people have feelings, like they're human beings. They'll understand, they'll apologize, they'll pick up their things, and they'll leave. And, they'll, and they're sorry. Even though Cantina was named a James Beard Award finalist, they say some food vendors won't even come to the restaurant because of the scene outside. Instead of being frustrated... Dio and Mariangeli feel that advocating for their community and those struggling with addiction has become part of the restaurant's mission. We are here because we are business owners, but we're also here because we have a social responsibility. We do without the restaurant, we stay. The Cantina, a pop of color amidst the dark depths of addiction. And George Solis um, joining us now. I, I get business owners, they want to stay invested in neighborhoods like this, even though all this is going on around them. But with that in mind, how are they surviving? Yeah, Yasmin, it's the cost of doing business in the Kensington section of Philadelphia. A lot of business owners there call it the Kensington tax. So, for example, you have insurance. Now, some business owners say they simply can't get anyone to insure them, but others say they can just at a higher premium. As far as that conversation about food vendors, well, a lot of business owners and restaurateurs, they, they have to work out deals with vendors to meet them at different locations so that they can get some of their supplies. And, of course, this is all coming out of their pocket. Nobody's compensating them for this, but it's what they have to do to survive. And another big issue for a lot of the businesses down there are these encampments that are set up in front of storefronts. And you heard there in that story that sometimes they just have to have a conversation with them and move them. Now, sometimes the city will come in and also provide eviction notices, but it all depends on how long these encampments, these tent cities, if you will, have been set up. 
bottom line here, a lot of these business owners say they want to work with the neighborhood. They don't want to do it by being hostile to the people. They want everyone to basically work together, and they hope that the community will respond in kind. Yasmin? George Sully's Force. Thank you, George. Really important stuff. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.